Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. We are here joined by just Turks. I hear you introduce yourself as Turks to people. You go by Jake, just Turks. You don't look I, I like don't, a Jake. I actually introduce myself as Avram Yaakov Turkotov. I almost never introduce myself Avram Yaakov what? Yeah. Avram Yaakov Turkotov, my full name. Turkle. Is Turkle Taub. It's not a secret. Is it that? sounds like the most made up name ever. Turkle Taub? I can't. Turkle Taub? Who would have thought that the Turks was the made up part? Yeah. Interesting. Turkle wow. Taub. Turkle Taub. A lot of Taubs originally, their name was Turkle Taub. I like that. Did and, they drop yeah. the Turkle part? There are some people who dropped the Taub part. And you don't blame them. Turkle? Right? I don't know anybody. Turkle. Turkle, Tarkiel. No, I've come across people. Really? Why would you? Steve, There's more Taubes. Steve Turkle, of course. I've never met any Gordanoviches. You probably have. I don't know. I Interesting. Okay, so so what does like your friends call you? They call you Jake? They call you Turks? What friends? You don't have friends. What friends? You, you have friends. I don't know. With people. Um, they call me Turks. They. I, I actually have this very big hang up. That's, I asked you if um, you're okay with me calling you Yaakov. Yeah. Because... To me, this is like this. People call me Yaakov as if they, they've always known me, but they assume, oh, Jake, oh, his name must be Yaakov. My name is not Yaakov. My name is Avram Yaakov. So either call me Avram Yaakov or call me Jake. Don't call me Yaakov and pretend like, like we're up as buddies because anyone who actually knows me wouldn't call me Yaakov. I think they're trying to do like Kirov on you when they call you Yaakov because they don't actually know your name and they, they know you probably like Jake. So they think you're right. like rebelling a little bit with your name. So they're like, Yaakov, you know, like, Yanko, come here. You're, you're okay. pitiful, you know? Yeah, yeah, no. So, but so yeah. They don't when, they, when they want to be sarcastic, they'll say Yanko. Did, if I could do it all over again, I would, I, I would never brand myself as Jake. I would brand myself as Avram. And I, I just want to Or Turkle Tab. I'd go. No, I wouldn't go with. No, no, because it's like that's painful. That's, not, that's unfair for people to have to mem- memorize that. Did, you, did you make a transition to Jake or your parents called you Jake? No, no, my parents are Hasidic, everything legit. The, the they don't say Jake. No, of course not. I don't know. They so, don't call me Turks either. But so, I'm very interested in this. The name because yeah. he's super Hasidic. We're talking about like Jake. the um, Jake part, Turkle Tau. You're, you're past that? <laughs> I'm past that. Yeah, I'm, past that. I'm still not past yeah, Turkle that's, Tau. That's interesting. Um, anybody out there is named Turkle Tau, please text Yako 917 654. Yeah, let's not do the real number. Um, so yeah, what's um, it, it was Turkle Tau became Turks, it was a camp thing. It was like, okay, now I'm no, Turks. We're, I'm yay. asking on the Jake part. Like, no, but did, then I'm like, you well, did well, that you for can't, you the White House, spoiler alert? I, as soon as I start, like, you can't introduce yourself as, as Turks to people. Yes. Uh, like, in, you're not in Rihanna. The, you're not like For Madonna, sure. Like. No, I'm not. And, and then also it's like, they'd be confused. They'd be like, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, did he not get my question? Like, what, what, what was that weird thing he just said? So yeah, I, and I, I wasn't going to I wasn't going to be Abe because Abe is like a cliche Hasidic guy. Like, right. oh, <laughs> Hello, ben Abe. I love people. Right. <laughs> Abe in the house, you know. So I wasn't going to go Abe. I like that you 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 are you're aware of that, that, you know, who, that a lot of people, not just Hasidim, a lot we of people. Were, he no, they grow up as it. they're <laughs> slaying me the whole life. And now all of a sudden, like. And they're yeah. in the office and like, uh, call me Saul. Like, no, buddy, I've be- been in, in high school with you. You're the not best, Saul. The best thing, though, is their LinkedIn profiles. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like, Steven, like, come on, man. He's yeah. the CEO and the vice senior vice president of yeah. and, and the deputy who knows what and everything. Of the company like Meridian. Made up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you don't want to do Abe. I do Abe. Right. To do something. So, so I did Jake. Right. You know, and uh, and that was that. Got it. And so Jake, yeah, Jake. Let's let's get let's straight into your life a little. By the bit. way, Jake and Jake Turks is like four letters, one syllable. So it works it's for you. It, it, it's got a good ring to it. It works. So well. it's calculated. I hear you, Jake I hear Turks. You. you. What was your What was your upbringing? Upbringing like for people what do you listening. Think? For Take people. Guess. For people listening. Um, I mean, it's no spoiler alert. I'm sure many people know that you are in the White House. You're an army, you know, correspondent. You also work for Newsmax. Yeah. Um, so you're in in the politics world, which is unique, um, being you know who you are and you. as a Hasidic Jew. Um, so, w- w- beginning of your life, like w- was that on the horizon? Was that something you were aiming for? Or? In hindsight, it makes sense that that's. I mean, I was always the guy who got kicked out of class for asking the the unqu- uncomfortable questions of, of the teachers. Is it inappropriate for me to say that? Like, I think it is inappropriate for you to say that. It. If like, you, if you kind preface, of like, I'm not surprised by that from even meeting you for like. Okay, but I figured out a way how to how to make myself useful. Right, that. So, you hacked it. You, know, you hacked so, it. You know, so now I'm like I'm I make money like asking uncomfortable, annoying, uh, inappropriate questions of politicians. So. You know, it's the same thing. I, I feel like your your getting kicked out of class was like 
training you to do what you do now. Right. So in hindsight, it, it, it's, it's obvious, but I didn't know that. The first, my, it's, it's so funny because sometimes like you reflect back and it's like, yeah, um, the first time I ever saw a reporter, I didn't know anything about media growing up, right? So I'm growing up in like... Where? where, where? Bar Park, Hasidja family. My family's Vizhnitz. I go to Bubba, fine. I'm already an outsider. Mm. And, um, but then my family moves to L.A. Really? So, okay. What age? What age? Um, like I'm nine, f- fourth grade. Okay. So... Why? My father became a Rebbe. Like, <laughs> no, a, like anybody who moves out west, right? Okay, nice. I mean, yeah, no, isn't that Hollywood. what the whole uh, Oregon Trail was for a bunch of Lambdam from New York to? No, I think I wasn't there. Um, Could be. So he he gets. Um, so we're there, and uh, I'm like 11 or 12 years old. And there's a lot of sevitari going on, and the the local radio stations sent down like some intern or something. They, they try to get a couple of quotes, which you know they're probably not going to use, but it's a slow news day. Who knows? It's always good to have. Back. So what do I know about media? The only thing I know about media is, you know, they, they hate the Jews, they hate Israel, and they're all, you know, whatever, enemy of the people, but not yet in those new, like, fake news was not a term yet, but, but we understood. It's like, like, you know, they're always out to get us. And so he's going around, you know, asking people, so what's this uh, occasion, and uh, how would you describe it? And I go, I say, Shom Aleichem, I want to talk to you <laughs> over here. Uh, he's like, oh, okay, uh, what would you what would you like to say about today's event? I wanna not say vegan the event. I wanna say as all from you, 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 you journalists, whatever, you think we know no, we know what you're doing with with, with the anti-Semitism with Israel. And the guy is like like confused but curious. <laughs> He's kind of like, oh, th- this is amusing. It might be a fun story, to, but I don't I don't understand. Like, is it something I said? Is, he, he's, he's totally good. And I'm like giving him this whole big mustache moves, and the, the dumber he's playing, I'm like, don't think I don't know. Come on. Everybody knows, and, and best case scenario, you're fooling yourself, okay? Were you German as a kid? Like, <laughs> I, no, so like a German I was, shepherd. Like, no, no, I was, like, actually, I was actually a Robert Greenspan as a kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, niche. But that was a niche joke. That was a niche I, joke. But well, well, you two guys got it, so... Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he'll... Post he'll, in the comments. He'll very you. much Wait, enjoy so, that. Wait, so, okay, that was Twitter mm-hmm. content right there. So, yeah. so, is that how you sounded as a kid? Yeah, I don't. I, don't know. I agree with Nachi. I don't know if like <laughs> you're hyping it up or like you really sounded like that. Check that guy's uh, recorder, like see. see right. See, see okay. So what was the rest of that? Story? But the but the point of it was that is that's that was my entire frame of reference for media. That's how little I knew about the entire world. It's not like it was like oh, as a kid I said good, so I'll 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 get high marks and then I'll become a journalist. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, so you were sheltered. I was very sheltered, uh, but at the same time I was also very curious and I wanted to know about the world and that. Is that curiosity it's unique change. in your in your circles? Is it like unique? I don't I don't think so. I mean, Jews are curious. Jews are always very curious. The question is, what you're curious about, right? Uh-huh. Some people are. I'm curious about your last name, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, some some people are. Just because someone doesn't express curiosity in, in let's say politics doesn't mean he's not curious about uh, Torah or or things right. whatever. Like like Jews ca- like like we're not satisfied with the status quo. We always have to like acquire more knowledge and right. you know so. Um, so I, I was like kind of, it was unexpected. I thought the guy would become all defensive and say, well, well, Israel doesn't have a right to exist, sir. Like, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I expected him. But instead he was like kind of smiling and, and kind of amused, but also kind of curious and, and genuinely trying to understand what I was saying. And he wasn't like upset and he didn't feel attacked. And it kind of like was like, huh, there's something here that I'm not understanding. Uh, so, okay, but. I was a kid, so I don't have to know everything. Different time. Um, yeah. That, that would have got censored nowadays, huh? Which part would have? You talking on the air, <laughs> saying what you're saying. You know, it's funny because when I had that, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember. I mean, I don't remember it, but, I, but people keep reminding me, so that's why. When I had that thing with Trump, with uh, that press conference where I asked mm-hmm. him a question. For the people that don't know, remind them what it okay. is. Okay. If you, <laughs> if you are okay with that. No, I asked him a question. Yeah. What was the question? There's a whole... So I had that question prepared for the for the press briefing for Spicer. Like Trump was not supposed to give a press conference. That was his first press conference as president, and it yeah. wasn't part of the schedule. He was supposed to announce the uh, labor secretary, and that, and then uh, everyone's supposed to go to lunch. And then he's like, uh, "I'm gonna take it." For co- should I do? Should I do it? Go for it. I haven't I haven't done it in so long. I'm I'm rusty. You gotta you okay, gotta try. It. Okay, let's say let's take a couple of questions. Who has this to take some questions? We're gonna take a couple of <laughs> Not questions. Bad. We're gonna take a couple. Okay, okay. You should we do that? Should we do it? Who thinks we should do it? Who thinks we should? Okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take just a couple of questions. Wow. Exactly. Not bad. You, you do better than Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro does not do good imitations. I could do Ben Shapiro. You could do Ben Shapiro. Uh, Why are you pointing at me? Like I don't that? know. That's what they say. How do you know that? <laughs> Interesting. 
By the way, you know who does the best Ben Shapiro? Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, right? Yeah, okay. And then? Second best. Ted Cruz on two times the speed. Oh, that's, we got to check about that out. Yeah, it's, I, I think, I mean, not that I'm an imitator, but when I do Ben Shapiro also, it's because we have, na- when you have a nasally voice, all you got to do is just talk and then talk faster. And then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden. Okay, and then people don't notice like the nasal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the, what does talking faster do? But I mean, no, so nasal and talking fast. Yeah, I'm saying that he speaks nas- nasally. By the way, Ben Shapiro is listening to this. He's like, they're making fun of me. I'm never coming no, on the show. All love. Oh, it's all love. Hold well, on, back to Trump. Yeah, okay, sure, Trump. Sure. So, what was the question? Yeah. So, like, yeah. so there have been this report that there have been like 46 or 48 bombs that's made against Jewish um, institutions within like a few weeks span. And I was convinced someone was going to ask the question. Like, how could no one ask this? So, I had a few questions prepared. And by the time he called on me, I was like, wow, no one, no one asked about that. And I don't like asking Jewish questions. In fact, there, there are very few questions that I, I've had over 50 exchanges with Trump, and you've probably not seen more than maybe two or three of them, because I try not to go viral. I try to ask most power basic questions, because not because that's my personality, but because whatever, I guess, for selfish reasons, because I don't want to get harassed. Pick, maybe. You want to no, get picked I, on more. You want to you get called no, on. No, no, not necessarily, because if, if I want to get picked on, I would uh, I would work for a bigger uh, outlet. Uh. No, I mean, Newsmax <laughs> is not the kind of outlet that um, you can expect to get picked on by a Democratic administration necessarily, right? right? So, right. Uh, or, or AMI. So I'm right. saying there are different things I would do, um, but ultimately... I understand the um, the uniqueness of the position that I'm in enough to 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 know you know to, to know my place is not to be the um, the one who's like oh I'll hear you know when Joe Biden calls you a um, uh, whatever hmm. I, I don't know what like how this like also I don't know what this airing could be the, yeah 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 let's for, see yeah um, go on so. If, if if Biden's gonna like have a hot mic moment where he's like yeah. calling a, a reporter, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it, let the the Jew reporter not be the first one, right? That, that okay, the story so happens you, to. I, I, yeah, I, I, you want to put your best foot forward. So to so, remind people what happened with the so, Trump right, thing. So right, yeah. so I so so I asked him about it. I I knew I had already covered Trump for a year and a half on the campaign trail before then. So I already knew if I just ask him the question straight out, he'll say I have Jewish grandchildren. Um, so his two go-to lines would be, I have Jewish grandchildren. Like, I've, I've, my, my daughter's Jewish, right? Yeah. And then uh, the other one was, um, how dare you accuse me of being an anti-Semite? No one loves Jews more than me. So I started the question to say, look, I don't know anyone in my audience who like, accuses you of being anti-Semitic or anyone in your staff of anti-Semitic. You have Jewish grandchildren. You're their Zaidi. And I said Zaidi because I'd actually been... I actually discussed it with like some inner uh, people, uh, inner um, uh, circle Trump people, who had told me that Zadie would go over, like he knew that he knew what the word ma- meant and it would go over well. This was a conversation I had with them like a while before. So like, oh yeah, that's one of the words. And he said, oh thank you, okay. I said, but I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm just I'm trying to understand over here, okay? Just what is that clear? Yeah, what is the government's position? Been a gay? I don't. <laughs> Some of the comments can. There's this guy on Twitter who who explains uh, Jewish jokes. Right. Tweet explainer about. Yeah, yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll, yeah. he'll do the whatever whole it is. So he'll he'll do the yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like, just, just, I, I want to understand what you feel is the responsibility of the executive branch of the federal government when it comes to addressing these things. You take a more hands-on approach, hands-off approach. It was kind of, and so he cuts me off in the middle and he tells me, tells me to sit down and shut up and he calls a question assaulting, he calls me a liar and then it goes on and on. He says, uh, you know, uh, his, the other day his uh, very good friend, uh, Betanyahu, we called him, yeah. uh, Bibi, uh, he then uh, added, uh, you know, he, he said, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, and I was saying how he's the, the best friend, like the greatest uh, uh, friend Jews ever had in yada yada. And I'm like, that's not at all what I asked. So, anyway, um, that was the exchange. Why yeah. am I telling you this? Oh my gosh! No, and it went viral. No, 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 no. But I was actually going somewhere with this, and I knew I was going up until like five seconds ago. I feel like that happens to you a lot. I it have does, but I was hoping it wouldn't happen in the first like like two minutes. So uh, uh, let's try to help minutes, you figure actually. it out. You're saying over <laughs> Trump reprimanded you. Well, first of all, were you were you embarrassed? Um, no, embarrasses embarrasses too uh, oversimplified of of the word. It, it was not embarrassed. It was, it's not, it's not something you ever felt. So you can't really explain. It's like what? ask ask a, ask a, a one year old like who just started walking what it's like to walk. Like when it happens to me the second time, I'll be able to say, oh, it was like that other time. No, what did you feel? Like you don't. Did you feel sad? Oh, did you feel- yes. Thank you. So so here's okay. here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going. So okay, I was yeah. I was the closest example. I was confused, and the the first thing that that came to my mind is did I use a word that became 
like a, a bad word yesterday, but like no one sent me the memo. <laughs> is, is it like one of these? What are the like now? It's Latinx all of a sudden, and I'm a racist because I didn't say Latinx. You said, you said the like, Z word. You said no, but the I was Z like, word. what was the? But but what? Okay, fine. But I was like, was, Zadie, the, was Zadie, there a word? Nice. Yeah. So like let's say the word thug. So the word thug used to mean thug, and now thug is like oh, so you said thug. It's a code word for. Yeah. Most people don't know this. Like, like no one's telling people when to stop using certain words. So, like, did I use a word that I'm not allowed that sort of started meaning something else recently, but I don't know, and that's why I got so angry. Because if you look at the actual transcript, there was nothing in the question that that was in any way that anyway warranted that kind of response. So, so yeah. So you know, we're saying about different words that you know. I, I assumed maybe it was a word that I misused. Well, it turns out no. So what was it? Um, you ever ask him? You know, so I get I I gave him my word that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say how we settled it. But what I could say is that so this was on a Thursday. Well, then just to, to clarify, you and Trump made um, up. I so l- let me so I'm answering that 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 question okay. in a way that I'm allowed to answer. Okay, interesting. This this happened on Thursday, so this was the third Thursday of his presidency. The following Monday, he gave a speech. He gave his first speech condemning anti-Semitism. He had never condemned anti-Semitism before. Every time he would ask, he would say, he would say, like, what do you want from me? They're not my supporters. I don't even know why you asked me this. Like, it's the first time he got up and he gave a very, very strong speech against anti-Semitism. And then a week later, he gave his first joint address to Congress and he started the speech with a two-minute condemnation of anti-Semitism. And that was not a coincidence. I'll just say that was not a coincidence. Mm-hmm. What I'll also say is that... I went on every single possible show that I could go on to, and I went on, you know, Fox, CNN, BBC, NPR, what, every, Al Jazeera, everybody. And I was never a Trump supporter, by the way. I did not vote for him in 2016. Okay. I voted for him in 2020, but not in 2016. And, you know, but I felt I had a responsibility because media was u- trying to use me as a token of like, oh, ha, ha, look, he's an anti-Semite. Look at the Jew. Look what he did to the Jew. I was like, no. There are people who've known Trump for decades who hate his guts, but they'll say he's anything you want to call him, but he's not an anti-Semite. And, and there's so many, so many people that I've spoken to who've said so many stories about just, I know families that he helped. You know, I know right. um, Andrew Tan, the, 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 the three-year-old kid from L.A., who would have been my age today if he was still alive, who Trump gave his personal jet to, to fly to, um, to New York to get, to get surgery when none of the airlines agreed to fly him. Um, I spoke to, uh, there's a show that his father, that his father um, uh, f- uh, founded right here. And um, I spoke to the daughter of the rabbi. She said something like that, that the Trumps would send, would send checks to, to, to poor families before Yom Tif. And the one common denominator between all of the people that I, that I spoke to that were recipients of Trump's generosity, they all said the same thing. The, uh, he, sa- he told them, he said, on condition that you don't, you don't tell, don't tell really? them about it. Don't let the media know about it. Like, he never, he did, he did so much kindness to, to people. And, and a lot of Jewish people, non-Jewish people too, I'm, I'm not saying he, he's not a flawed individual, but I'm saying you wouldn't assume that this guy who makes such a big deal of everything, always wants publicity, is someone who's helping people and telling them, please don't, just, just let's keep this between ourselves. And, and, and for the most part, it worked because most of these people, most of these stories are not public knowledge. It's ironic because, you know, I don't know much about politics, but when you think of Trump, you think of a very loud person. Exactly. It's interesting that there's exactly. behind the scenes. Everything about Trump is a contradiction it. in the extremes. Everything about mm-hmm. Trump, any, any behavior th- or like if you say he's a narcissist, I could show examples of how he's a narcissist, how he's like, a, like the top narcissist, also examples that he's the exact opposite of narcissist he's the most sensitive person least sensitive is he person. misunderstood he's every he's he of course he's misunderstood because we like to to just sum things up and like oh well he's this oh that explains everything makes sense well you work in media uh you, you work for army magazine you work for newsmax it's sort of your job i think that media plays a huge role in how the public are able to perceive people um i'd say media plays a role especially nowadays a very strong role on how politicians are portrayed do you think yeah. that your job or your colleagues are the reason why he's so misunderstood and misrepresented? So on the one hand, let's say a reporter wants to give a very accurate uh, portrayal of Trump. And let's say they actually un- understand Trump. I've covered him for five and a half years. I know I don't understand him. Mm-hmm. And I know that almost everyone who says they understand him is missing a lot. So as much as, so let's say I, I finally say, ah, oh, I figured it out. I understand Trump exactly. But it's going to take 17 hours for me to explain it to you. 
No, every, everything needs to be fed, into, like, like broken down into a soundbite. Everything needs to be like, and it also needs to be provocative and, right. and, and, and flamboyant and, and boom. You can't expect people to be able to process something that is so complex and complicated like Trump. Right. This is, this is actually a, um, I guess, maybe a watershed moment, which at the time didn't feel like anything. But So there's a guy, Howard Winkler, drug commissioner of the state of California, uh, active in politics for like 40, 50 years, and, and a really gishmaki guy. And so uh, we sat next to each other in Shul, Rabbi Ginsburg Shul over there. And then my bar mitzvah comes, and uh, he gave me this card. Bill Clinton was president. says, uh, congratulations on best wishes, blah, blah, on official White House stationery, signed Bill Clinton. And... That sort of got me into, like, used to, you know, start schmoozing with him about politics and, like, what's going on in the news. And, you know, in, in the, in the non-from world, the non-Hamish uh, world, there is no opportunity for a 13-year-old kid and a top government official to end up on a regular, consistent basis sitting right next to each other and just be able to just, just get to know each other on a personal level. You know, um, the, the from billionaire and the from schlepper are going to end up eating the same kogel. <laughs> They're going to use the same mikvah. The kids go to the same school in the same camp. And if the schlepper, Ben Gavra Gavra, has this idea for like a new whatever, he'll be, hey, listen, this is Shabbos great. I, I have an idea that maybe, but, but. and then the, he's like, okay, let's, let's be in touch after Shabbos about this. And then he's like, okay, what was your idea again? <laughs> I love it. Okay, you're the manager now. Boom. There's this upper mob- mobility that exists nowhere else the way it does by us. Okay. And if, if, you're, if, if you're smart, you're talented, you're, you're driven, you could, you could get places very quickly because you're able to get through. But in Without th- degrees also. Like, you don't need sure. degrees. It, to, f- well, for certain, well, you, you, if you want to be an architect or like a doctor, I mean, come on. Certain <laughs> you need certain qualifications. You need, right, yeah, yeah, licenses. But, but for, for the, the kind of uh, niche uh, Jewish, I, mean, I don't know you, how, long, how hard to get to get a, a real estate license or a yeah. Yeah, life in the insurance. Bu- uh, so like, it's probably a 70 hour course online. In the business yeah. world, yeah, where, where you could meet so many wealthy Yidden and just see them buy a VAR. Like exactly what you're saying. You have the keys yeah, to but, but a lot of but But you're, you're, always, you're always bumping. In, 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 the, in the non-Jewish world, and I'm not saying this as a like like majority or anything, but there's there's first class, there's economy class, and no one from one class is going to end up long enough and in a comfortable enough setting with someone from the other class. You're not allowed into their clubs or, or onto their golf courses. You just it just doesn't happen. Would you say that there's really no there's no class system in the from there's world? There's no class system in the from world in a traditional sense, correct? Really? That's so interesting. I never thought about that. Right. So when I'm sitting next to this 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 guy, this government official, who's like really super connected, and so ten years later, I'm working for uh, for a magazine, and it's like, oh hey, it's 2012. Why don't I uh, call my friend Howard and ask him, you know, what his thoughts on the on the political? I wasn't covering politics. I was writing like uh, you know, I had a humor column, and I you know wrote a couple for, of for Ami for Ami, yeah. Okay. I did, I did a couple of features on, on things that interested me, but I wasn't like covering any specific. Uh, you know, and so I, I asked, I said, oh, so who are you supporting? He says, Newt Gingrich, Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House. At the time, he was the, the n- second after Mitt Romney. He was number two in the polls. And uh, I said, oh, Newt Gingrich. OK, why? He's like, yeah, I've been friends with him for many years. I, I know him very well. I know he's sincere. He, he loves Israel, the Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, OK. You think you're going to be an interview with him? Because, of course. Because why, like, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Shoot your shot. Yeah, so he's like, oh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll shoot him a text. I'll see what he says. Like, was like, it's like, you could just, you have his number. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. I don't, I don't know if, I mean, he's very busy. He's, you know, running for. I'll let you know. A couple of days later, he uh, gets back to me. He says, okay, uh, I was able to secure you a half hour interview, and uh, uh, be out tomorrow morning in LA. And um, no way. The, and I'm like, I never interviewed anybody. Not, <laughs> not just in politics. I never interviewed anybody ever anywhere. But I wasn't going to let this opportunity, um, you know. Go. So in the end, I ended up um, traveling with Robert Frankfurter from Ami. And he did the interview. But then, like, the last couple of minutes, they gave me a couple of questions. That, that, and I was shaking. So I, uh, he's a very intimidating guy, Gingrich. And he's like a, he's a star. If, if you, you know, I, I know sometimes you like to ask if you could go back and meet. Yeah. If, if one of the, your guests over here goes back in time and meets with Bill Clinton and Al Gore when the president and shoots them both dead on the spot, mm-hmm. Newt Gingrich is president. Okay. Wow. That's very, that's, saying. Is it, right? that's, not, that's like not so far. 
Yeah, it's exactly. third, 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 third to most yeah. powerful plus person twenty in America. years ago. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> thirty or whatever. Plus a, time, plus you, a time machine. When you were yeah, doing yeah. it, when you he was the current speaker of the house. No, he wasn't the current speaker, but no. he was current um, second place on the Republican. Wow. Um, yeah, he was hot stuff. New, yeah, was, new, I mean, he still, he still, he still, he still has a big following today. He's a, you know, he's. he's anyway, so that was your intro to. So that was my that was politics. my intro to politics. Yeah, interesting. So, once you do that, you know, I mean, you know how we are. We're very competitive, you know, and uh, with, with ourselves and especially with our friends. And, of course, everybody, you know, is like, uh, like, oh, Shkoyer, Hennut King, Shkoyer. You got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could also Hennut King, Shkoyer. He's no chance, no chance. I don't know. See, see you, you, you don't know politics. So you're That's lucky. so yeah, good. Yeah. But, but you know how, like, these from people, like, everybody is either, if it's someone that you met, then it's like he's the greatest guy ever. But if someone who who like never gave you a shot, like he's a chance, he's a nobody, he's a nobody. Let me, try, let me see you interview with me. Yeah. So I said I, I could do it. I just I, I don't like politics. And I'm, oh, it's going <laughs> cop out. Uh. So I'm like no, I really I'm, it's, politics doesn't really interest me, and it still doesn't. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm very I'm very good at it. I'm very good at analyzing it. But it's not something like if um if if I'm on vacation, I, I I'm not like watching not, like, the news. Watching it. If, if I have to do it for my job, yes, I'm going to be on top of every single thing. But I don't do it as a passion. I wouldn't do it like for free or whatever. It's so saying? interesting that you don't like politics. I don't like politics because I I understand politics so well because this is what I've been doing. I so can you speak? I, to I that? understand what, what the people are. It, it it's so um, predictable to me. First of all, nobody who's going to be the president watches who's going to be the next president. That's not no, not that, not that, like not that. that. Okay. No, nobody watches the speeches from both sides. Ah. Anybody who biased? follows politics, no, no, no. Don't any, preach it to no. the choir. Any for sure, but 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 it's but it's a lot worse than that. Anyone who follows politics is going to watch a speech. If if I mean even the most hardcore are going to follow the speeches from their side and then watch sound bites that their side tells you the other guy yeah. said, the other side said. But what I came to realize watching both, and the only people who watch both are the the, the reporters who this is their job, or the. The staffers whose job it is to try to see what's the other side doing that's working, and now let's try to copy them. Most of the political speeches are, are identical in the same way they could have two competing plumbers, but they use the same techniques more or less. Hmm. And they'll say the same exact things about the other party because they know that nobody on the other side really listens or cares, and it doesn't matter. And they're just trying to get their base into a certain mindset. And so when the when it's like, yeah, but what about when when but what about about but what about Trump? But what about it ends up devolving into these very predictable kind of like and so it comes to a point where you don't want to feel the discomfort of like having a fight with someone. So what you do is you either look for something you guys agree with and it's, oh, so we agree. So we're on the same page. Good. So now we don't have to talk about this anymore. Or it's, oh we disagree with, I hate you, I blocked you, boom. Now we don't have to talk about it either. So it doesn't invite dialogue, it doesn't invite understanding, it doesn't uh, give people an incentive. It's very dividing, it sounds. It, it, it is very divisive, and the people at the top have figured out how to monetize it, and it, it, it's... It's, it's, um, it's drama. People it's like so, drama. It, it's so fascinating from a, from a, a I guess, sociological, uh, anthropological point of view, just to see how... People don't get what is really being, they don't understand how it's a single party duopoly. And there, it, it's, it's not that there's like a group of shady individuals who are pulling strings. Everything is so predictable that no one has to pull the strings. I'm not saying, obviously, within a certain framework is very predictable. And so if you are the party that's not in power, you're still making billions of dollars. You don't really care. And you know that you'll be back in power because it's going to shift. There's never been more than um, the past hundred years, there's never been more than uh, I think three consecutive presidents from the same party, and that was that was hundred that was going back to the nineteen twenties. It, 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 you're not going to have two presidents if they're if if they're really good presidents, then eventually they'll they'll get all cocky and be like, oh, I'm great, and then and then the party's just going to make a bunch of mistakes, and then and right. then the other guy gets in. If they're bad, then the, it's just going to keep on going back and forth. So. They understand how it works, and then the people who never take it seriously, and, and they really believe it, they really believe that their party stands for, for ideals. If Mitt Romney wins in, uh, in 2008, when, uh, the first time he ran, and uh, he's like, hi, I'm president, and uh, guess what? I am going to, uh, we had this idea called Romney Care. Let's uh, implement it across the country. It's a great idea. 
Democrats would have found something wrong, so wrong with you pushing grandma off the cliff. They would have made it the worst thing possible. Republicans would have said it is conservative values. This is what Abraham Lincoln would have done today. And everybody would have, like, the, the sheeple would have fallen in line. Would have, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. This is, and they really believe it. They don't, they don't feel like they're being fooled because they're being fooled by, by such, such smart people who have been doing it for so long and it just becomes part of the routine. Um, so, anyway, yeah. This so is, that's why you don't like politics. This, this is what I hate about politics the way it takes advantage of people who really. Um, think of think of a politician, the kind of person, uh, not like a Nancy Pelosi who's like a billionaire now because like like she she is insider trading and stuff. Because of Pfizer. Think of a po- most most politicians, most people who run for office, are successful in, in in the private sector or whatever for the most. Okay, Joe Biden when he was twenty seven. What, what, but I'm saying people th- they're usually successful people who look around at their community and say you know I want to make a difference. And there are people maybe with ego, maybe with ambition, fine. But the people who give up lucrative uh, careers, successful businesses, and go into politics where they get making $100,000 a year. And they do it because they're driven and because they believe in something. And then if you're a member of Congress, House Representatives, you have to run every two years, which means that you're perpetually running. You're never yeah. not running. No, yeah. So the first time, you still believe in your ideals. And by, by the second time you're running, you realize, first of all, it doesn't even matter because if, if it's not me, someone else in my party is going to vote pretty much exactly the same way. And if I vote against it, unless I'm the deciding vote, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But it's like, yeah, but the other guy is terrible. Because look at, look at all those things, he's, he, all the lies he's spreading about me. Because a lie about yourself hurts 100 times more than you realize the lie you're spreading about him. Because it's like, oh, no, I misspoke. I didn't. Ha, come on, Tim, do me a favor. But he, what? That, that's not at all what happened. What are you saying? So suddenly you have to defend your seat because the other guy is evil. And now you'll you'll you're ready to make alliances with anybody. You'll you'll take any any money from any big and then the guy's that's why Trump's gonna run again. I said Trump's a different story altogether. <laughs> but Carrot, no, one of the, the appeals of Trump was that he 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 claimed to be so wealthy that in a way that people actually believed. He's like, I don't I don't need your money. I I, I don't need the money of all these rich people and he he didn't. He he was able to turn down people from your front row seat during his presidency, has there ever been a president that had more from Jew influences so close to him as Donald Trump did? Um, yeah, they say that uh, Grover Cleveland was... What? <laughs> how many, you, said, you said, from my time covering Trump, Trump's presidency, but how yeah. many presidents? No. No, I, I mean, like, and you're, you're, I imagine that you know, you're like a history buff. You know other presidents. Yeah, and, I, I, yeah I, I do know the history so, of presidents very well. So has, has there been a president that has had a closer ties with the from community? I mean, Trump spoke by a... Um, from events with Louis Shiner and and yeah. Ruby Schroen and all those that whole chevra, has there been a different president that's had such that he called him he called laser he called him what did he call him Marvin Mar- he called him Eliezer Shiner yeah because that's what the paper said yeah. I know I'm like okay he doesn't know Eliezer what, what yeah. was it I don't know Loser what's your name? Yeah. Uh, uh, is that, so is that a bad question like no 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 that's a very good question but it's very hard to really have. Um, first of all, how many from people, how many Jewish people were there in the United States 100 years ago versus now? I asked 100 years ago. Like, um, no, you'd be saying, so, could be saying was, was there a president who had better connections before his, b- before entering office? Or as president? While, enter, while president. While president? Closer, closer ties with the from community than Donald Trump. There's, it, it's very interesting. So let's, let's, say, let's say the White House Hanukkah party. So they hadn't been doing Hanukkah parties for all that long, but for the 20th Hanukkah parties, no, you you, ne- you never had a from rabbi um, la- light the menorah at a at a White House Hanukkah party under Obama or under Bush. Trump was the first one who not only did, but every Hanukkah party that he had was a was was, was Chabad, was modern Orthodox, was Hasidish, but there was was always a from. And when whenever it came to benedictions, when it came to um, uh, n- uh, national um, day of prayer at the White House or whatever, it was always an Orthodox rabbi. Hmm. Um, Marvin Heyer was Marvin Heyer by the by inauguration, of course. Um, Why is this? Like so, well, part of it is because Orthodox ended up gravitating towards Republicanism, and you know, and he's he's not going to invite someone who he thinks there's 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 a small side that that the guy's going to turn down his invitation. So, when the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, like like some players uh, said, oh, Trump, uh, uh, well, I'm not inviting the entire team anymore. Everyone's disinvited. Right. You know, and then he just he said he's doing an event just for the fans, and he had uh, had a thousand people in the White House, but you know, but but none of them were fans. W- one they were they were actually staffers. Really, they were staffers from Capitol Hill and from the White House. They said, "Hey, hi- hide your badge and just walk around and just you know whatever." And Trump's gonna speak. It was, it was very funny, but anyway, yeah. 
one of the things you brought you brought a bunch of stuff but right. i yeah. saw you brought a cookie yeah that said happy hanuk I, I i brought a couple of so um the white house is very big into merch, merch? Into, yes absolutely who's bigger into merch the white house or thank you Hashem? <laughs> Um, you know what Hashem? They're gonna collapse. You know, you know, you know what Hashem has on his car, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I also have Twitter. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't say. I asked you if you knew it because I, I, I knew you knew it. That's yeah. Me. Um, this is. Um, what are these? These are M and M's from Air Force One. By the way, the, they're the they're ones more inclusive now. By the way, so yeah. they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The ones that I that I have are the ones that are not kosher because one they're kosher I eat. <laughs> this is a a Hanukkah cookie with the seal of the president that was given out this year by Biden's White Hanukkah party. It just cracked on the way over. Oy. Um But well, it is it bad. is not a kosher cookie, so I'm how I'm, do gonna, you know? I'm gonna have to throw it up. Uh, Maybe Hanukkah it is. Time. It just uh, Pesach time. How how do I know it's not kosher? Yeah. Very simple because um, when first of all they didn't have a they, they didn't kosher the kitchen this year. Okay, there you go. Second of all, um, when you ask around the White House and uh, like, like hey, uh, so uh, is this uh, is it kosher? Like, can you confirm? And no one gets back to you, then <laughs> you, know, you know the answer, right? What's what's on your bracelet there? Well, this. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I've been waiting so long. I didn't. I, I, I forgot to have it. You also like Lush and Hara Low and the Yeah, yeah. Low and the Yeah, there's actually a very, um, Israel. very passive aggressive reason why I wear it. Why so do you? So imagine I'm at a press conference. I'm raising my hand, right? And yeah, I have other reporters like, and, and it's a very reported type of thing to like display interest in someone else's like um, foreign language message. Like, oh my God, what's that on your hands? Probably like a really cool message or something. Like, so I say. Listen here, you you fake news enemy from the people, and I and I give them a most schmooze. No, but I'm I'm very I'm very polite. But I explain to them what like like what Lush and Har is and this and that, and they're like and they'll be like, oh wow, so how, how does this justify our entire industry? Right? <laughs> I'd say no, no. I say first of all, the, the, like, there's a point. way of no, no. I'm not trying to. I'm not telling them what to do or not to do, but. First of all, there is definitely a, a very important role that media plays in, in you know, keeping the government um, in keeping, check. Yeah, because you know, the West Wing is very small. About a quarter of like the West Wing is is dedicated to the press. Most White House people don't work in the White House. Most White House people work either in the Eisenhower Building across the street or they work in satellite buildings. But it was important enough for there to be a press presence. And you know, people always say, yeah, these reporters, are, they're so obnoxious, they're so disrespectful. That is the job of a reporter. The job of a reporter is to be breathing down your back. Yesterday you asked how come you don't go to war, today you asked how come you do go to war. Yes, fine, good. Keep them guessing. Well, I think nowadays that's why people are so fed up with the current situation because the same reporters that were trying to break Trump are being very soft on Joe Biden and they're not challenging that, him. Okay, so that's, that's a misconception. The, is it? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. The kinds of questions. So, what was like the typical question that a reporter would ask of Trump? It would say, it say, um, Mr. President, why are you such a disgusting, despicable, lying yeah. <laughs> sack of garbage, right? Yeah. And then, what was the what are the kind of questions that they would ask of, of Joe Biden? Same exact thing. They would say, uh, uh, Mr. President, why is Donald Trump such a disgusting, despicable, lying sack of garbage? Same exact question. Same exact question. Nothing it's, changed. It's not the same question. No, it's the same question. He asked, he asked of Trump this, that, the question. He has the same exact question. Same words. Even. Same thing. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. Yeah, no. You are. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> look, you had CNN had its moment under Trump. Fox had this moment under, under Biden. The overwhelming majority of reporters are the kinds of people that don't really, they don't go viral. They don't, they're not looking to make the story about themselves. So you don't really know, you don't hear about them, you don't see about them. But there are always going to be a few reporters who are, like, who are going to ask like really tough or uncomfortable questions. And just the fact that they're right there and we share the same the same hallway, the same like like I bumped into the president like in the hallway. Um, not just the president, like like members of the cabinet. It, the West Wing's very small. It's mm -hmm. all it all happens right there. I mean your father's been to the White House, so he can tell you about it. Um, your father. Why am I looking at yeah. you? Who's your father? <laughs> 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 no. like, maybe yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you Jews look alike. Like, <laughs> we look like the opposite we look like the opposite people. Yeah. If Hashem create could create two people who look less alike, it's probably us too. I, I think I, I think if you look at it at a at a negative, a film negative of yeah. each other. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah. Can I ask you a question? Do you feel a responsibility, an extra added responsibility, dressing the way that you dress, being who you are, 
Uh, do you feel like every time you open your mouth or every time you step into the White House or you step on Newsmax, do you feel like you're representing the from community? And if so, what does that do for you? Don't we all? Don't we all feel this way? <laughs> You're a politician. Let me, let me, no, no, no. Let me, let, let, let me okay. If, if okay. I, I mean, if we're in situations with. I'll show you my DMs, okay? Every, and, 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 and I can show you every single time. Like, who you think you are? You know that present us. You know that the class rule. You're, you're not, you you go, <laughs> but but no, you're a nobody. You're not gonna present that me, not nobody. Like, Definitely the loudest guest. I really <laughs> never, we've never had a guest go that loud. <laughs> the, you see the, the level just went over here. Is that what it's, it, it like went off, uh, yeah. It's really edited. Uh, <laughs> I don't, so that. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to do my job. I, who thinks I represent anybody? So, who, when, if, if you see some of the press go with the turban, does that guy represent all Sikhs or, or, or all Muslims? How, no. People, what? people stereotype and, you know. I mean, I think that okay. when, well, I, come on. I we're we're harder there, on ourselves than anybody is on so, us so you in don't that feel, regard. So, so you don't feel like you represent the firm community when you get up there? I've felt, see, the, the difference is now I am a lot more cognizant of the fact that the cameras everywhere and the the recording devices everywhere. Before now, it was was hard. It was like, oh, um, should I have held that door open for that person? Nah, who cares? But now it's like, okay, well, you never if know I don't, watching. who knows, whatever, right? So yeah. in, in a way, it's easier because um, you're always on the alert, okay. right? Um, but if you're a mensch, you don't really have to. It just becomes part of your nature. Are you a if, if, if you're brought. No, no. If I do say, <laughs> I try. I try. I have my haters out there. Probably. I don't know. When I showed up to my to the job interview at Abby, they're like, "Okay, so show us. So what? Like, what have you done?" Like, I said, um, "I have a Twitter account with a few thousand followers. I uh, come up with a few funny jokes every day. So I've written that, and I, ra- I wrote the Camp Bonham newsletter in mm. um, 2005 or six or whatever. No way. Uh, for two, yeah. I, I, presser. I, I, yeah, yeah. Oh. The first year that they that they were Bonham, I I did the newsletter and the yearbook. So I said that they're like anything else, I'm like boop. like mm-hmm. so. Why are we sitting here? I said, because I have a very good feeling about this, and uh, when I when I when I have a, I, I feel like I'm ready to become a writer. I want to become a writer, and I've never um, failed at anything that I that I had a good feeling about. They're like, okay, uh, why don't you uh, send us a sample? We'll write something up, send us a sample. Okay, so I I sat down, I picked the topic I was interested in, I spent two weeks, I wrote a feature, I sent it in. They're like, oh, that's pretty good. And then a couple of weeks later, it was perm time. They said, uh, hey, we're looking for someone to write a funny article. Here's I write something funny. I wrote, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, try. I wrote something funny. I took a bunch of tweets. I, I turned it into, a, in, into an article. I, you know, was all along like the same topic. And, uh, and Shine, they liked it. They published it. They asked me if I could do it every week. I said no. <laughs> they said, um, well, we want you to try anyway. Uh, we're giving you a column. You start in a month. I, so that this was they said the week after Pesach you start. I said okay a month I'll figure it out by then. You know, that's fine. A couple of days later I get like a really really angry call from my editor. Where is your article? I said well, you've got to be joking. I, I still have another three and a half weeks. Like no, you start this week. I said no. I was told. Who told you that? I don't know. That's what I was told. No, you started this week and this, you're the only thing that's not in yet. I'm like who called you, Dahlia? Dahlia? Dahlia was like four <laughs> years old then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. So no, it was Mrs. Frankfurter, oh, okay. she, like my uh, my my editor there. So I'm like, oh my gosh! So I stayed up all night and I I put something together and it worked out. And, and sure. so then slowly, I started doing more news stuff because I realized hey, you gotta you gotta pick something. So uh, the news is something there's there's always something to to make fun of. So I said write mostly about the news, then a little about politics, and then after two years the Newt Gingrich thing happens. So suddenly now I have to be more uh, and. There's your life. And then <laughs> I, so I ended up getting all the Republican candidates for president over the course of that, of that um, cycle. That's cool. Yeah. And I worked really, really hard on it. And I had to be very innovative. Uh, there was, uh, I'm getting in trouble for this. I'm like, I'm like Joe Biden. Where Nobody listens. Start saying Don't worry. Something. Nobody listens. No, we have seven, yeah. eight followers. You do? Yeah. But 15. these eight followers are going to spread. Uh, so, um, there was one uh, one candidate for president that I had a very hard time getting hold of. Um, he was he re- he was, Ron- I guess. Okay, Ron Paul. Who cares, uh, Ron Paul? But Ron Paul. He's actually a listener, so he's yeah. fascinating. No, no, no. He's a fascinating guy. I, I really, really wanted to interview him because people were calling him an anti-Semite and this and that, and 
I, I feel like call. most people who who are who are called anti-Semites are anti-Semites. It's like the guy said something and 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 you built the whole thing out of it, and because it went viral, and now that everyone calls him anti-Semite, Koch now attack is an anti-Semite. Like 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 what do you expect? Like all all the Jews are are talking trash in him all all day long for <laughs> a few months, <laughs> and all the anti-Semites are like, oh that guy's one of us, and they're nice to him, so so he's gonna feel like these guys are nice and these guys are jerks. <laughs> so yeah. so you're creating anti-Semites by calling people anti-Semite in in many cases. So I want to give people a, a chance, especially if you're running for public office. Um, so, like, I really wanted, and and I never felt that he was an anti-Semite based on what, I, like, like what I saw. I, I saw what people said. He said, "Well, like, okay, sure." And so he said it, right? Um, so, I the way I talked my way in was really was was really cool. It was something masterful. When they make a movie about my life, it's probably going to be like a tiny scene. That they're they're not going to make a big deal about it, but it's gonna, it's a bigger story than you'll see. I think see. this might be the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. I came unprepared. Rabbi, so I, 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 I came unprepared today. I'm sorry. I, so I don't know who that was. <laughs> no, it's, it's a typical Shavu Brachas guy who says oh, he came unprepared and he and takes out a that stack, a like a whole phone book of <laughs> uh, speech. Um, so, yeah, so I, I basically told, told I, I found out a couple of names. I, na- I said, uh, so-and-so sent me here, told me to wait here, and then, you know, after the speech, I was supposed to interview him. And they're like, who? Oh, yeah, they told you to? I'm like, yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, okay. I'm like, there's no way that they're gonna call him now. Shine. So then the next guy's like, uh, excuse me, what, what? it's like so and so. I just spoke to. You. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, talk. Okay, fine. So that got, and then it got me into the. There was like a special security tent, and they kept asking me. Um, so where's your press pass? I'm like, this is this is a a private meeting. Mm-hmm. This is not as press. This is an actual meeting. I'm supposed to be. You know, press pass. I didn't then. Oh. I just started then. Okay. I was like, you know, you don't ah. get a press pass like in a week. Okay. That was right after the Newt Gingrich story. Okay, okay. So I'm like, I'm like, well, press? No. I'm not, you think I'm press? No. And like, oh, it checks out. It doesn't look like, like hmm. press doesn't look like that. So uh, then, then I got in and uh, I, I, I spent like, like maybe 10 minutes with him. And here's the craziest part. My voice recorder malfunctioned. Oh, God. Okay. And I still have nightmares to this day. Like, like my nightmares. We always, have. We are always worried about that, and we're not interviewing yeah. people running for office. I pressed. I pressed the record button twice. Oh no! And oh no! And I. I didn't. Nah, just check. okay. We're good. And yeah. they, uh, they, they already. Like, they saved the cover for me. It was like, and, and but you don't remember like, the conversation. As you, you can't reconstruct the conversation. You're quoting a guy. Sicha. I'm like, what in the world am I going to do? What am I going to do? You should have been a chazer. You shouldn't have been a chazer. What is that? It's like the people used to listen to the Rebbe speak on Shabbos. Oh, and okay, okay. And then you should have brought someone. Jacobs I thought I'm gonna have to wait for. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna have to wait for from Tweet Explainers uh, comments, but no, <laughs> we got it. You should have brought someone Jacobson along with you. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't remember? It's okay. Yeah. Uh, so so you, w- what? What happened was there was a reporter um, who was working for BuzzFeed at the time that I, like she borrowed my phone charger. I don't know what it was, but I I got her card, and like after two days of stalling, I like not know what to do. I call her up and I'm like I. I really got to admit to you, like, like bleh, bleh, I don't know how. She's like, I think I might have a solution. Let me, let me, let me. Let me Turns out there was a guy who had a camera. There was, a, like, one of the cameras was rolling the entire thing. It was, like, hmm. like, like, like on a back wall. No way. And they were able to get the entire audio. It's awesome. Just because it was a random camera rolling. And she happened to know about this. And she happened to know the camera guy. The one person who asked me for my phone for, to borrow a phone charger. So you mean there's a God? Um, so he creates a world in six <laughs> days and then he does this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Wild. guess. So Wild. I, I want to ask you about you. You, you seem... By the way, when, yeah. when, when Hashem says this story over to people, he's like, there is a me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. There's So you, you sound like you're some form of a comedian. Um, some would say a late, a late Let's, yeah, let, I would say that. but you're also doing this somewhat very serious uh, job out there. Yeah. How do you like balance being a jokester, but also having to play this role yeah. of being super serious? My, my Letsonus is very rusty, first of all. Okay. Second of all, you can't succeed. I don't think so, but yeah. You, you can't succeed. Would say. You can't succeed in Washington without, um, like, if you take yourself too seriously, you're going to get crushed and destroyed. You, you have to have a sense of humor about yourself. You have to be able to laugh at at crazy situations, and and not and and, and not let it um, not let it destroy you, and not let it uh, get you down. So, I was able to adapt. Uh, I've been phased out of my comedy and phased into this serious reporter thing, which I resent. 
and which is probably not good for me um, <laughs> mentally and emotionally. But um, this is the rat race. I, it's, I, don't, I don't get. I don't get to make these uh, calls. You just go with that. Before we get to our fun questions, we're wrapping up. What's uh, what's a story you could share with us about your experience in the past? I don't know, five, ten years that maybe you haven't shared before. You know, I always make sure to avoid these kinds of general generalized questions when I answer people because so now, now, now my mind's in terrible. Oh my gosh, which story? So either I just, no I just wrong. pick There's a no story wrong. that just random story comes to mind, or. I was like, did I ever say this one? I did, I said, oh, it's, if you I said did. it, it's fine. I, chances you, are our audience did, yeah. did not hear it. Okay, I'll tell I'll tell you a story that, but you can't ask me what the story happened with because I'll guess though. You'll, okay, you'll guess. I, I, I'll okay. guess in the comments. Whoever got twenty five points, if you if you could guess, Pesach quick. Seder points, like raffle tickets. No, no, but these are better. You can do, you points? could do whatever you want with these points. Ooh. You're not limited. This you can do anything. You can walk into a store. And you can just tell the guy how many points you have and then ask him. I mean, so Are these points like money? I'm not telling him what to do. It's like money. It, I don't know if someone wants to accept it as legal tender. It's probably you can make NFTs yeah. out of it. I don't know. <laughs> probably worth more than U.S. currency right now, these points. Ah. I could go for it. Um, speaking of currency, I actually have some, but, but we're not going to get to everything. Um, the story is there were so what made me want to like like become a member of the white house press corps it was it was uh, there were maybe 90 90 media outlets over 100,000 just in america uh, itself media outlets in the united states only about 90 of them have a uh, a hard pass from the white house um it's it's not and it's very very rare that they allow a new outlet in because the the hard passes don't have an expiration date so once you're in they can't get rid of you um, Secret Service, if they decide you're a threat, and that happened, I believe, two times in the last 60 years, uh, that Secret Service can revoke your pass. But otherwise, once you're in, you're in. So it's, and there is no official process. There's no like application. There's no like uh, committee that you, there's no process. You just got to play the long ball for a very long time and hope the right people um, notice you. And, and, and then one day you get a call from Secret Service uh, calling you down for a meeting. That's, that's, and sometimes it could take months, it could take years. Or it could take never. So, so actually, when I got when I got my when I got that uh, that email from Secret Service inviting me for that meeting, I happened to be like on my emails that moment, right when it came in, it said, uh, "Please call us at this number to to schedule an appointment." So I I was within twenty seconds of getting the email. I was already on the phone. Like, wow, we just sent you that email. That was fast. I said, "Are you kidding? You know how many years I've been waiting for this?" Yeah. <laughs> so, the um. Th there were there, there was one specific story that happened that really and I I don't believe I've ever shared this in public. If anyone in the comments thinks that they already heard the story from me, correct? I don't think I've ever I've ever said the story. Um, and it was about was you know a bunch of years ago, and uh, I was trying to get an interview with a a certain a very very well known politician. And I'd worked on, I think, for eight, nine months, like, like going after the guy. And so many times it was like, yes, we'll do it. No, sorry, you can't, we canceled. Like, like things kept on coming up. And, you know, it's all, you always have to just say, okay, well, I'll try next. There's a, a balance between you can't be seen as a pushover, but you can't be seen as like you, you could never – because they don't owe you anything at the end of the day. And, and, and if, if, you're, if you just say one nasty thing, whatever, like, like okay, bye, get out of here. But if you're also like, okay, fine, it was my shirt, then they'll be like, okay, this guy's not – doesn't care enough about it. You have to – so after, after so long, finally, they're like, okay, we're, we're going to set up an interview with you in this and this location. Be there at this and this time. Gavaldic, finally. Hopefully, they're not going to cancel it. I show up, and it turns out that they had promised a few other media outlets the same exact thing. They said, uh, yeah, show up, and uh, we're going to give you that interview. They guys have been pushing, like, hop around everybody. So before the interview starts, so like, uh, it turns out he's running behind schedule. Uh, we're only able to give each of you five minutes. Okay, five minutes. All right, we'll do what we can with five minutes. Then they're like, sorry, he's running even more behind schedule than we realized. We're giving everybody just one question and one follow-up, and that's it. And please understand, and I'm sorry, and I know you guys are very patient. Whatever. So we're waiting in this room. And out of the blue, a security guard comes over to me, and he says, can I see you for a second? I'm like, sure. So he calls me out of the room, and we're standing in the hallway. And he says, you see that door down the hall? Do me a favor. Can you go over to the door? Just open the door. There's someone, someone on the other side. Just, just can you open the door for them? I'm like, my pleasure. No problem. I walk down the hall. I open the door. There's a cop on the other side. He's like, all right, move along. And I turn around, and suddenly I'm outside the building. 
and the doors firmly closed. I'm like, no, I have an interview scheduled with the. Well, we were given orders that no one, uh, like, like no one is to enter back in. Like once you're, I'm. What? In the, what happened? I'm so confused. I, I don't understand what happened. Well, so I, I text, I text this guy's press secretary. I'm like, security just escorted me out of the building. I don't know what's going on, and she's like, what? I don't. And now she's she's more upset than me because I've been harassing her for the past like more like half a year plus. And she thought she's finally getting rid of me. And hmm. like now it's like, oh, she's like, I, I can't. I'm with, I'm with the, the so-and-so right now. Like, I, I, you know, I can't leave aside. But like, okay, we'll figure it out. I'm like, yeah, right? What, like, I don't even know what to say. Um, two people come over to me independently afterwards. And they're like, I'm sure you're wondering what was going on. And so there were more people in the room, like not reporters. And I'm like, yeah, I'm dying to figure out. And they're like, well... Um, basically, one of the reporters went over to the security guard because he figured, like, look, if there are four of us and we're all getting five minutes, if there are three of us, we're getting seven and a half minutes. So he tells the security guard, you see that rabbi over there? Huh. He snuck in. He doesn't belong. He's not a real journalist. Are you serious? Yeah, security guard didn't think twice. He's like, oh, that checks out. Like, why is there a rabbi here? <laughs> By the way, it still, it still keeps happening, especially when I was in Israel with Trump, with Pence, and I'm I'm in the, I'm in the motorcade, right? I'm traveling with the president. They never saw a, a Haredi from Eshar. I'm traveling, like, and what would happen is they they thought they're all getting fired. It's an international scandal. Like one of these protesters got in. I was like in the mm. car, right? <laughs> and they and and they kept on coming over to me and tr- and like they would grab hold of me. First, I could see the core of my eye. I could see their jaw drop. Like we're all dead <laughs> and then the guy gives gives me a grab and then and then you start dra- and then I just flash in my my white house pass and then their jaw drops even more like one of them got in <laughs> what so i still get it but but now it's funny um but at the time over there in that setting i said to myself never again is someone is someone going to look at me security guard going to look at me and say oh yeah that guy is a rabbi who doesn't if someone tells a security guard at this point, like you tell any Secret Service agent, oh, that guy's a rabbi. Does believe like, no, that's Jake. What are you talking about? So you made sure that everyone knows who and you so are. So I said, no, so I said, I said, I am, um, I said, I have to figure out a way. I need to have the kind of credibility that cannot be questioned anymore. And that gave me the biggest push to, to, to complete this very vague and, and at times frustrating um, White House process because in order to in order to get a hard pass, you the only people who could uh, petition for your hard pass would be the White House Correspondents Association. But you can't become a member of the White House Correspondents Association without having a hard pass. See, mm-hmm. so mm, yeah, they'll give you a loan if you prove that you don't need the loan. <laughs> <laughs> it's is that type of thing. So how do you how do you break past that, right? So that um, so that's a story I never I never shared before, and. Um, so you kind of owe it to that per, that reporter that because they kind of well how did you helped did I miss the part where you ended up getting the meeting yes you missed the part because what oh, happened yeah. was okay so so they were like, <laughs> no I didn't think it was important because obviously obviously I ended up so the um so the so the press secretary calls me up afterwards and she's she's so apologetic she didn't know what happened she had no clue like like yeah. as far as she knows I'm in the room she steps out and then she comes back and around the room and I'm like someone kicked me out and I don't know what happened. So uh, she's like, okay, uh, we're gonna. So this was on a Thursday. She's like, okay, uh, uh, can you be tomorrow, Las Vegas, seven thirty p.m.? I I got you. I got you a few minutes. I said, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the Sabbath. I can't do it. She's like, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I said, we we go to print Monday night. It has to be before Monday. And she she doesn't want to have like the scandal of a Jewish reporter kicked out for looking too Jewy or whatever. Yeah. I didn't say I'm gonna do that. Like, look, she. Lemaisa, she knows how hard I worked on this, and and she knows like she's also a mensch, right? So they got me, and the joke was that like the people in the room got like a half a minute or whatever, yeah, and and I it. ended up getting getting like a, a like a full a full one on one on on Monday. That's awesome. So it it did work out in the end. Life doesn't it doesn't always work out. Yeah. It doesn't always work out, and and you can't uh, you can't let it get you down. But instead of trying to get even, you should know uh, when when I have opportunities to get other reporters like uh, access to things or or help them out with information or whatever. Like I'm, I'm I always I always do it, no matter like they, they could be the most extreme right wing or left wing outlets, they could be like like my immediate competition. 
not only have I never done anything to try to make it harder for someone to, to have access, but I, I proactively look for opportunities to help people because I know that if, if I'm stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere and it's just me and this other guy, you know, I, we don't have anybody uh, like th there's like kosher food and there's stuff that like we, we need we need to work together. We can't we don't have the luxury of 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 being enemies. Did um, you yeah, that makes that's that's really it's really important to hear. Did, did you feel in that moment when it all came to you why you were kicked out? Do you feel like, man, maybe this isn't maybe this isn't for me like. That's I felt that these things that happened to me so many times of, of people disrespecting me because of like oh you're oh shkoy, oh you're a journalist haha <laughs> they true. dismiss you it, but it's but it's but it's almost never non Jews it's almost always people within the community that that that, that, that Wait, why can't people fuck in it's not, by the way it's not, when I say community I don't mean necessarily just from like like I'll have I'll have non non religious Jews like all the time also the same same thing where they'll be like oh. Uh, you, you, you're not educated oh you're not credentialed or you're not and then when I when I when I show them or I tell them about my my uh, education I tell them about my I show them my credentials they'll be like oh it must be something else and then the firm is exact the opposite they'll be like oh uh, obviously you're obviously you're BT you're not you know yeah. you're not, I, I am <laughs> oh no but then uh, but, but you're out of towner I'm like well my parents <laughs> live in out of town now but I'm from uh, but um, hey, and I'll say oh, oh well yeah oh your family was here in the 1800s oh okay now I understand everything mm. like they're always looking for something to be able to justify why they themselves weren't able to so they're ah, always trying to is. find That's oh if, if I would have been a uh, Balchuva if I would have been a Dib eh? I would have also at a town I would have also been able to do this so it's, <laughs> not a, not a Kiddush. it's people's excuses for not following their own I dreams. think it's people trying to like justify like why they yeah exactly why can't they follow we're going to ask you our, uh, our ending questions and I know we didn't get to a certain segment about you just Fine. you yeah. mentioned the yeah. shtetl your family was here very back in the day it was very cool story, uh, yeah. and uh, part two um, yeah. so we're going to start off with you heard it here first uh, we're going to start off with um, yeah. is there a favorite mitzvah that you have that you connect with more than others um what if it's not a mitzvah? Like I know a, it's I know a mida. Like I know what? a mida. Oh, a mida. Okay, let's say it's a mida. I don't know. Okay, we could we could change the question to what's your favorite mida? No, he didn't. Uh, no, like I'll, I'll tell you the most. I don't like any of them. <laughs> Go on. You don't like any any of them. He doesn't like this question. <laughs> um, the 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 idea of shomer chapasam be'enim yishivan of being able to accept being ridiculed and 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 just go with it and and the um, story of your life yeah has that no, always no, no, been no no, no 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 not me i'm talking about what i've witnessed the most underrated it, if i could nominate if you if if you could have avi berkowitz or jared kushner on this program they are two people who have been maligned disparaged ridiculed can you get for, us then for <laughs> uh, listen it's it's up avi, to them it's avi, avi, avi walks by this office a few times a week. they they have been for so and and Almost all the stories were, were were not true, either in its entirety or definitely based on on false premises. They never lashed back out. They never reacted in any kind of. They never fed into negativity, which only made the haters even more enraged. <laughs> right. And they they never and Ivanka too, by the way, like she's she's such a balasmidas and it it fascinates me because there's no way in the world I w I would be able to withstand even f like for a, a, a day. Or a week, there's no way I'd be able to 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 control myself that way, and it's so underappreciated, and it's so it's so underrated, because it takes so much willpower, and you don't get any awards for it. You don't like no one even notices, and it only makes the people who are doing this even like like want to do this even more to you. So uh, to me, I think that is the. Um, if that's a mitzvah. Um, no, it, it's interesting you're saying. I, it, we're not putting this out during Shaivavim, but we are recording this during Shaivavim. That is the key of Shaivavim, self-control. Like, obviously, there's a department that everyone, like, yeah. you know, thinks of first, but that's that's the whole nikuda of Shaivavim, like, having that self-control that I can't even imagine, yeah. all that ridicule that it's amazing. they get, it's am it really that they not answer I back. I have a show and tell, actually, about this um, this uh, thing some that I actually randomly came across. I was looking for the Bill Clinton thing. Um, do you do you know what this is? Just just looking at it, like do you know it's what printed, this is? Printed uh, and it's chesed dollars in the White House. Is no. So this is the largest denomination bill ever ever produced. If you think seven percent uh, inflation is is a problem, this is how many zeros are on this bill? It's from Zimbabwe. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, and so what's the? You could read it. It says the the number literally on the on on the bill. Oh, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Yes, I'm joking. I'm joking. True, true. Trillion. One, one tr- no, one hundred trillion. One hundred trillion dollars. It's the largest bill ever produced. Do you know what that was worth? Some eleven hundred, like turn it into a one dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Great call. Shout out, someone. I want to see it. Do you know what that was worth? But that was like what was the value of that was compared to the U.S. dollar at, at right before it was phased out of um, circulation, like like when when it uh, probably like a fifty it. cents, very close, forty cents. Wow, um, on the money you oh could my, buy. Degree in cr- nas- yeah. international currency. You could handy. buy two rolls of bread with a hundred trillion dollars, or <laughs> Zimbabwe, or with forty cents American. If you bought one roll of bread, and you gave them a hundred trillion dollars, you could expect to get. A twenty-five trillion dollar bill and ten cents change. Okay, wow. it seems like very non-efficient for currency to like have so many zeros. Well, paper was va- was more valuable than 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 currency at the at, what's this worth that, now? Oh, so it was worth forty cents. So think at first, it's like hundred trillion. Wow, I am the biggest bill ever. Think about what that must feel like. And then being told, yeah, well, it turns out now you're only worth forty cents, and now you're worth zero because. Zimbabwe in 2008 are like, yeah, we're not like good about money stuff, so just just use dollars and euros and and really? and, 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 and never mind. Wait, us. Well, I missed the segue. Why? Uh, let me let me. Yeah, so, okay. okay. So you have this first is hundred hundred trillion dollar bills on top of the world. Now it's worth four. Then it's worth forty cents. Do you know how much these sell for today as a collector's item? You know what these right now? You could have told me when it's still in my hand. <laughs> yeah. The, okay. If, if you go like on Amazon or eBay and, like and you buy these. Okay. And by the way, there are a lot of like forgery. You have to know. You have, I to, guess. You have to make sure. How much do you think? Okay, go ahead. I go like ten thousand dollars. No, no, not, not too not much. That, not yet. Not I overshot a thousand dollars. Close. It's about three, four hundred dollars. Oh wow! Each. When, I shot way yeah. <laughs> ten thousand. When I well, when, yeah. when I first heard you should of have these. stopped at the forty cent, the fifty cents. That was like you're very close there. <laughs> when, when I first heard of this, they were selling for like eight bucks, and then like a couple months later, I came across again. How many did you buy? They were selling for. F- Enough. He has a lot of that. <laughs> enough to, I se- see enough, enough to send enough to send your kids I, to I school. I only have two of the hundred oh, trillion, okay. but then I have like the the fifty trillion, ten trillion. I have like the, the whole gamut. But 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 I'm I'm building to a point over here. It's okay. your backup plan, okay? Yeah. One hundred. Um, so it's the second time. I'm keeping track of how many times I lost my uh, train of thought. I'm doing pretty good. You're doing really good. Really we're like but we're over time, yeah. but only two. Um, the hundred trillion dollar bill was phased out of circulation. But when I first found out that it, that was such a thing, was they were, they were selling for $8. A couple months later, I'm like, oh, they're selling for $30. I'm like, look, if I wasn't going to spend $8 and it was worth 8 why would I spend 30 Like, uh, for sure not. Then, by the time, eventually, I, I was able to get this for 50 Now it's worth, like, they're, they're a couple of hundred. So the, the lesson here is that you have this bill. It's worth $100 trillion, Then it's worth 40 Then it's worth zero. Now it's worth a couple of hundred. And... <coughs> Here, at the same time that they were still printing these hundred trillion dollar bills, they were printing one cent bills as well. Mm. This is from I think it was two thousand. This is from two thousand six. Okay, they were printing one cent bills and hundred trillion, and, and then again one dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, everything in between. <laughs> so what's the one cent worth? Now the one cent, like it's negative, born into the world being worth nothing. It was not worth anything ever. It was one cent of the worst currency. Ever, and it's like I don't have a chance. I'm mm-hmm. a nobody. Okay, it's so this one cent is, is is like getting a lot of exposure right now. How much did I pay for this one cent bill? Four dollars and thirty four cents. Hmm. Okay. Do you know how much I overpaid compared to the value of this? Four dollars and thirty cents. Again, again, like if a hundred trillion, four, if a oh, hundred yeah, okay, trillion okay. is forty like a cents, billion trillion percent. So remember. we're talking about um, again. Math was not my, my yeah, big thing, yeah. but we're talking about you missed the vision. It's quintillions. Like, well. No, we're talking about I I paid a few quintillion times more. My four dollars over cents is a few quintillion times more than this than the value that the highest value that this ever had. Okay. So in la you look at somebody, and and okay, like oh the guy's a nobody. I don't need anything. I'm never gonna anything from him. He needs a favor for me. I don't care. I don't have time for him. But then also you look at someone and you're like, oh, wow, this guy is so wealthy. Oh, let me try it. But then the guy loses all his money and now you treat him like, like a piece of garbage again. That guy could, could rebound again. The $100 trillion bill became nothing and everyone laughed at it. 
if you would have respected that $100 trillion bill when it was still down, if you would have been there for them, and now they're back up again. Okay, so maybe it'll stay up, maybe it'll go back down, who cares? Like, we tend to judge too much people based on their, their current situation, and, and it's, 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 very, it's, um, it's just not practical. It's not helpful for you if, if you're trying to get connections with someone. Be nice to everybody, and eventually you'll end up by mistake being nice to the guy who ends up making it big, and then that person will remember, oh, you know, he was one of the only people who was nice to me, who were nice to me. It's a beautiful lesson. It's such a nice lesson. That's really, I, like, I really like I did that. Um, what, what do you want Avram Yaakov Turkeltaub. <laughs> you almost almost went through the whole thing. <laughs> Avram Yaakov Turkeltaub to be yeah. remembered for. Admeva Esrim, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for the guy who came up with the wittiest answer to the who in history do you want to meet? <laughs> no. I, no, I who don't Who in history don't do you want to meet? Who, what do I want to be remembered for? You know, when they make the movie about my life, I, I want the... the, the, which the is, by the way, who's going to play you? It's going to be called Turks. Like that's Who's going to play you? Me in your movie? Yeah. I'm going to be in your who's movie? The Jack Langer. Who's the, yeah. Um, no, look, I don't know who's going to play me because they don't make movies about your life when you're still alive. Right. right? So I'm not going to be involved. I'm not going to know. No one I know today is really going to be that Whoever's much Whoever's going to play him is like not born yet. Whatever. Right. Hopefully. Look, hopefully, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, or, or maybe I, I look young forever and then, and then someone who's like also I'd young say like forever. an Ashton Kutcher movie. An Ashton would play him? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, there's no one who could play a Hasidish role as effectively as a, just a regular Williamsburg Okay, Mandy Palin. Shane. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to I, I be remembered for having a very uh, nice, touching musical score in my movie. Like, not just... <laughs> music, but just want Every the time I think you're about to be music. serious, I just like... I, I'm 35. I don't have to think about what I want. You're 35? Am I, am I, yeah, I thought you were am older. I, are you? I thought you were way older. Am I being older. executed? Why do I have to decide what I remember for now? Just don't, I'm just gonna, don't walk okay, through that door. Yeah. You know, Chris Hansen, like, don't. <laughs> I'm going to be remembered for the time Tom, Trump told me to sit down and shut up. That's what That's what people still, like, always that's ask me about. That's what you want to be remembered for. I don't, but it's not up to you. No one. No one's remembered for what they want to be remembered for. Sure, that's the point. And so, oh, yo, you're such a bachesed. You were such a tzaddik. He was always, like, the, the, the learning... Uh, the, the, I don't know. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's whatever I decide I want to be remembered for. I'm going to be disappointed because that's not what's going to be. And guess what? Everybody who remembers me is also going to die. So it's not like it's, so. <laughs> You're so not you ask me for such a tiny window of time. <laughs> this, of, this could have been such like a hopeful, like, inspiring <laughs> answer. You're like everyone's going to die. So was, you just kicked in. Did I just break news to you? <laughs> you just like kicked in people's seasonal depression. So I I, wa I want to ask you this question, and and we ask everyone this question, but I think okay. you in particular, it's going to be a little more. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it'll be a little more interesting. You mentioned it before. If it's one person in history you could sit down with for an hour, who would it be? And the recorder will, will work this time. Um, I would spend the rest of the time with my son who passed away in 2016 and is officially a historical figure. Um, the baby was born like beginning of the ninth month. And like, like we, we were told that there, there, might be pro there might be complications. And the day it chose to be born was April 15th, 2016, which was the same day that Donald Trump had his uh, Trump Tower meeting with all the, the, the from uh, mm -hmm. reporters. And, and I, I missed that. Um, I missed that. that day. I was like in the hospital while that was happening, you know, looking at my baby, like hooked up to all kinds of machines. And it was, it was like such, it was such a crazy, um, it was like on the one hand, you have this problem, but on the other hand, it's also happening on a day that 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 for your could, job, could have yeah. been a pretty could have been a pretty big uh, day for, uh, in your career. Not just the opportunity to ask Trump questions, but also like you get to meet with his people. You get to and and then when I'm at the White House and the people are like, yeah, um, wait, you were not by that thing, right? right. Like I don't remember you, you know. And and now what? So. Am I, am I going to tell them? Oh yeah, because my baby died. Like I'm not going to like I'm not going to do that either. I'm right. Like oh well, yeah, I had some pressing family uh, emergency. Oh, Shkoya. It's like uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to take off some time to spend with my family, and there's nothing to do with the scandal that was just exposed. Hmm. I'm just you know, so it it's kind of sounds like oh he's got something to hide probably, and it was uh, it was like a very compounded. Um, obviously, it's like. Why am I even comparing? Like, who cares who you were supposed to meet that day? Right. But but I'm just saying what's well, going through my mind because Context, yeah. because five o'clock in the morning, my wife's like, we got to go to the hospital right now. I'm like, how could we go right now? I have to be by Trump Tower at eleven, and she's like, 
I, okay, I, I understand, but we got to go. I'm like, okay, so we're going to go. Let's go. And like the whole, the whole car ride, I'm thinking like, uh, I hope the, I'm like, okay, so if she finds out that it's, it's false labor, how much time do I have to still get over it? To, and, and then I'm like, okay, well, at least let me be able to tell people, oh, Mazel Tov, he had a baby. That's why he missed, but, I, but it's not Mazel Tov, he had a baby. He has a baby, and then and it dies like 17 hours later. Um, yeah, but but I would I would like to even even if it's still a baby, even if it like can't you know talk or anything, I would just like to to sit and hold his hand boy for fifty. Or a girl. A boy. I would like to sit and hold his hand for fifty five minutes. No, Jake no, 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 Turks, thank you so much for making this trip. I'm so happy we were sure. able to do this and get to know you better and hopefully expose you to the rest of the world. Oh my I want to don't blame <laughs> it on the Jews. I want to title this episode as I'm Rabbi Avram Yaakov Turkentau. <laughs> Turkentau. But. You, like ex- exposing people to someone is is what like we always get blamed for. I mean, Any, uh, why uh, can China take take take, take you, the fall you, for what? Closing. Us? What's your closing remark? T- uh, Ten seconds. What's your last thing? There's no closing remark. You just keep talking. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, see you.